One of the oldest concepts in the field of psychophysics is the absolute threshold. And this is the minimum magnitude of a stimulus that can be detected 50% of the time. So it is the softest sound, the lightest touch, the weakest odor, the dimmest light that can be detected 50% of the time. Now that 50% criterion in the definition is very important. You may not see it in textbooks, but for this class you could get a quiz question wrong if the 50% criterion is omitted. And I'll show you why it's important. This figure shows the ideal threshold which does not exist in nature. This is not how our sensory systems work. But if I were going to be testing for the absolute threshold, I would be presenting different intensities or say loudnesses of a sound and I would be having a human or non-human animal responding if they detect the sound. Each intensity of the sound would be presented multiple times. So then I could graph the results. I would have on the vertical axis the percentage of trials in which a sound of a particular intensity was detected and then I would have intensity of the stimuli across the bottom of the graph and this would increase as you move toward the right. Looking at this ideal threshold which does not exist in nature you can see that when the intensity of the stimulus is zero meaning there's no sound then the percentage of trials in which it was detected is zero and then as you increase the intensity of the sound moving to the right you're still seeing zero percent detection until suddenly there's a hundred percent detection this figure is showing a situation that does not exist in nature where you shift immediately from never detecting a stimulus to always detecting one that's slightly more intense. Again, this is not how our sensory systems work. There's noise in the system and the change in detection is going to be far more gradual. This figure shows how our sensory systems actually work and it is showing the absolute threshold. So once again, you have percentage of trials in which a stimulus was detected on the vertical axis, ranging from 0% to 100%, and the intensity of the stimulus is on the horizontal axis, increasing as you move toward the right. You're seeing that once again, when the intensity of the stimulus is zero, it is detected zero percentage of the time. And then as you gradually increase the intensity of the stimulus, you might see that it is detected 20% of the time and a little more intense of a stimulus is detected 50% of the time and you increase it a bit more and it might be detected 80% of the time until the sound is loud enough that you detect it 100% of the time. This is the way our sensory systems work. There's noise in the system and it's a much more gradual change in detection of stimuli. They get more and more intense. So looking at this figure, what is the absolute threshold? It was a fairly arbitrary decision in the history of psychology. They might have selected 25% detection or 75% detection, but what was selected was 50%. And so the absolute threshold, according to this diagram, is that point, that intensity of a stimulus that is at the 50% criterion. This takes us back to the definition of the absolute threshold. It is the minimum magnitude of a stimulus that could be detected 50% of the time. Let's talk about the difference threshold, another important concept in psychophysics. The difference threshold is defined as the minimum amount a stimulus must change in order for the change to be detected 50% of the time. We're no longer talking about the weakest sound or dimmest light that can be detected. Instead, we're considering two sounds, and the question is whether one sound is louder than the other, or is one light brighter than another? Are they different? This is the difference threshold. So imagine that we were in class, <laughs> and I asked for a volunteer to come up to the front of the class and be blindfolded, and I hand you a 50-pound bag of Perina chinchilla chow. And so you're standing there holding that 50 pound bag, could be monkey chow, dog chow, doesn't matter. It's 50 pounds. And you're blindfolded. You can't see what I'm doing. And I add a piece of paper to the 50 pounds that you're holding. And I ask you, do you detect the difference? And you're probably going to say no. So I add another sheet of paper. 
and I ask you, well, is it heavier? And you're likely to say no, because I have not added enough weight to what you're holding in order for there to be a just noticeable difference, a JND. And again, there's a 50% criterion. This was arbitrarily selected to determine the value of the difference threshold. That 50% criterion in the definition is important for the difference threshold as well as for the absolute threshold. So why are psychologists interested in how our sensory systems work, in answering these basic questions about our sensory systems? There are psychologists who are interested in answering scientific questions to acquire knowledge, and that is how many new discoveries are made that are useful to society. We cannot predict what scientific discoveries are ultimately going to have applied uses. There are also psychologists who are interested in comparisons between human and non-human animal sensory functioning. You also have psychologists who are interested in assisting individuals who have some form of sensory impairment and in order to be able to design instruments that will help someone with their vision or their hearing, then a basic understanding of how our sensory systems work is essential. I always ask this question in class, and let's see if you understand it. Suppose I said that the absolute threshold is really just a special kind of difference threshold. Does that immediately make sense to you? It does to some students, but not all. Basically, you should think about it this way. The absolute threshold is a difference threshold. It's the difference between no stimulus and presentation of a stimulus. If you're taking part in a study like this, you're basically being asked, do you detect the difference between this, absolutely no stimulus being presented, and this, a low intensity stimulus being presented to you? 